Well, hey there, lovely folks. I am so thankful for your life. I am so thankful that you're here, and I hope that you're having the best day ever. Welcome to the Have You Heard podcast. I am your host, Emma Mae McDaniel, and friends, I am just loving that the last handful of weeks I've gotten to introduce my mama because today I'm getting to introduce her again. This is going to be so much fun. Grab your headphones and let's get into the word. Mama, this is great. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. (laughs) This is so fun. (laughs) Oh, I just love it. What is something that made you smile today? Oh, Remy. Remy always makes me smile and he loves Mama J and he gives he lets me rub his paws. He yes. Does. Mm-hmm. He knows your name too. He does. Like whenever yes. we say we will always say right before we come over to your house, like, Do you wanna go see Mama J? Do you wanna go see Lottie Moon? And he his ears <laughs> perk up because he knows those terms yes. and it's so cute. <laughs> he does love you. Yes. So he made me smile. Oh, he makes me smile too. <laughs> I I've loved so much how I feel like our episodes have been like so refreshing and I also feel like we've just gone to the hard topics in the tough conversations. And that leads to something I would love to talk about today, which is like our generation is going through tons of stuff in our culture, mm-hmm. facing tons of different things. And I would just love to hear you are one generation ahead. Mm-hmm. What would you say looking at our generation is something that we're overcomplicating, something we need to do more of? What advice would you give to our generation? Uh, um a good question i think it's it has many different answers probably that we can kind of dive into i think our generation looking back at your generation and things that you're probably over complicating is that hindsight's always 2020 and so the the people that are a season or a generation ahead of you you know it's definitely worth your while to sit down and talk to someone um, from a generation ahead of you just because I think sometimes that the things that we think are the big things aren't the big things. Mm. And so I, I would just say, make sure that you've got a mentor that's a season ahead of you. And when I say season, I'm saying a full generation ahead of you that you can sit down and just glean from what they would go back and tell their 24 year old self. Yeah. Um, Cause with, I would go back and tell my 24 year old self that Remember what really matters. What is your filter? Because if you go back to our very first podcast that we did, my testimony, you know, at 24, I was ha- I had had my second kid. I was going to I was about to start in the next couple of years. I was about to start wrestling with this emptiness that I was having in me. And so I would love for somebody to have sat down with me to say, hey, like what really matters is this relationship with God. And this is what it looks like. And this was my story. And this is how I got there. So I would just say, make sure that you are taking time to be poured into by someone a generation ahead of you, asking the hard stuff. What would they tell their younger self? Things like that. I think things that you're probably overcomplicating is it's probably the small stuff. Um, I think it's the what the next steps need to be from a career standpoint. Um, it's, it's like, I just see it all the time in my in, in my work as I'm seeing younger people come into the corporate world and I see them striving and everything that they're going after and what they're trying to do. And hustle. while it's there, oh, it's so much hustle. And while it's adm- um, admirable, it's at the same time, it's, you know, you want to say, slow down. It's, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's like yeah. slow down and just really enjoy the season of life that you're in because what you don't want to do is look up and there's been seasons that have gone by that you really were on so much automatic mode mm-hmm. that you didn't take a time to truly learn what God was teaching you, what was there to enjoy in that season. Um, you look up and you're in a season where it's like, wow, I, 
I'm a little bit more lonely up here where I wish I would have enjoyed the season down here where it was all the learning and all the, yeah, you could mess up and it wasn't that big of a deal. I could learn more. So I would just say that overcomplicating is probably you're like trying to rush season to season, Mm -hmm. slow down. And then I think just from a faith-based standpoint, I would say your generation has a lot of burden on their shoulders. Um, and I think every generation does. And so the burden's not off of my shoulders by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But I do think your generation, the stance for truth and not to confuse what love looks like is really, mm-hmm. really important for your generation. Um, you can love someone and not agree with their values or what their choices are. Love doesn't necessarily have, it it doesn't, love doesn't equate to always agreeing. Yeah. And I think that's what you and your generation and the generation behind you is having to battle. Mm -hmm. Um, And we are to an extent as well, but it's really strong in your generation and the generation behind you. And so I would just say, having a mentor that's pouring into you, Mm -hmm. not overcomplicating the season that you're in because life is hard enough. Just let's take it day by day. And what is truth? And it kind of just goes back to what we've been discussing in other podcasts. Be okay with rejection. Mm -hmm. Love people. It is the greatest command. Love God. Love others. But love doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that they agree with. And so sometimes it's going to be calling out truth. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go against what they stand for. And that's okay. That's actually what we're called to do. And so being okay to be rejected is going to be really, really important for those in your generation and the generation behind you. That's so rich, mom. I love Lauren Daigle. And one of my favorite things that she has said is that real freedom is found whenever you are okay with being misunderstood. Yeah. And that it honestly hit home for me because it so speaks into in Proverbs 29 where it says that to fear people is a trap, but to trust in the Lord is a safe place. Mm-hmm. And I think that so speaks to what real love is. And I could have the deepest, most genuine love for somebody and not agree with what they're doing. But in my expression of not agreeing with what they're doing, they hear that I hate them. Mm -hmm. They hear that I'm not for them. They hear that I'm against them. And I think for me, sometimes I can just almost feel like I'm melting (laughs) because I so (laughs) badly want them to know that I love them. But they don't have the ears to hear that that is love because to them, love is agreeing. And so I love that you're saying that to let go of the fear of being misunderstood yes. and let fear of God drive what you're doing because people are going to misunderstand. People are going to reject. And if I'm expecting otherwise, then I'm going to live a miserable yeah. life. Yes. Yes. And mm-hmm. I also, I love so much what you were talking about with just having a mentor in your life, having people who are seasons ahead. Cause it goes back to what you were saying a few weeks ago regarding like the importance of having a learning spirit, yeah, like the importance of clothing yourself in humility. Mm-hmm. I don't know it all. That's one of the reasons why I wanted you on this podcast so bad is because I think it's so important to have these conversations. And one of my goals is that our conversations on this podcast starts conversations in, a, in diff- yeah. other communities and in homes and in coffee shops where people are like, oh, there's a lot of questions that I actually should be asking because I don't know it all. Right. And also that I'm literally speaking to everything you said because it was all so good. But that is so true what you were talking about with just the hustle, mm-hmm. work hard mentality. But something that I really took note of is that you said that's admirable. And I think sometimes we have a hard time holding contentment and hustle in the same hand because we think it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. We think I either have to hustle and constantly be focused on the next mile marker or 
I'm content and enjoying the season I'm in. And I love how you said that was admirable, but be present yeah. because you actually can do both. I can yeah. be the most hardworking person yet believe full well that my success, my value, my worth is not found in how high up the ladder I go, yeah. but it's found in the God who's with me every step of the way. So mm -hmm. I'm able to be fully right where my feet are. Yeah. I think it's, it's one of those sayings that I've, um, and I've seen it in the workplace as well, is that the ones that actually honestly grow in their career for longevity, like they are definitely, they're growing from one position to the next position, and but it's for the marathon. It's the longevity race that they're in are the ones that they're always focused on the here and the now. Mm -hmm. They're trying to do the best job with the job they have today. They're not trying, they're not actually even looking at the job for tomorrow. They're yeah. focused on the job of today to do the best that they could possibly do. And those are the ones that actually they thrive and people notice that because they're actually noticing they're working with everybody around them. They've got great relationships. They're all in it. So true. And those are the ones it's like, okay, I want that one to be in this role now. Mm -hmm. And so just know that if, you're, if, if your aspiration is that you want to grow in that career, you want to grow to that, whatever that looks like for you in the workplace, I would tell you, be the best at the job you're doing today. Don't look at the next step. It will find you. It's interesting in my career, I've only interviewed for a maybe three positions in my entire 21 years with the company. The That's other, so true, actually. Yeah. The other positions have all been, hey, Amanda, we would love for you to go take this position. Hey, Amanda, we need you over here in this role. Hey, Amanda, do you mind going over here and taking? That's because I am focused on the here and the now and do the best job I can, be the best leader for the people that are around me, and the next job will find you. You don't have to go strive and wear yourself out searching for it. That's so cool you say that because I was getting coffee with a friend yesterday and she brought up this, we were talking about the same topic and she brought up the story of David and how he was a shepherd boy in the field and he didn't go out and of course there are times where this makes sense, but he didn't go out like trying to make sure he became Israel's next king, but God sent Samuel to come to him and say, it's time for you to step yes. here. And I think there is so much in that of just, I am right where my feet are being faithful to where God has called me. And I trust that he is going to show me the, yes. the next step I'm supposed to take when I'm supposed to take it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I love too how you're talking about like just the encouragement of let me find my words if it happened again. <laughs> I was wondering if it was going to happen this week. I know. It really <laughs> happened so much. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. But just the encouragement of like not letting the world's definition of truth, not letting the world's definition of love be what we are running off of and then the encouragement in the whole hustle space i feel like that really speaks into like women mm. in our culture and um yeah there's so much that i could say but i want to hear what what advice would you give to women specifically in our culture today? Yeah, I think, you know, it's funny. I think it carries, it's multi-generational. Yeah. I think sometimes, and I'll say, so I think it's it's comparison. Um, it's, it's not just the curse of one generation. It's actually the curse multi-generational for women. Even women in my generation, I see it in women generation ahead of me. I see it even in my mom's generation of women, this comparison mm -hmm. of, well, I should be doing it this way, or, oh, she's got it this way, I need to do it. And definitely social media has influenced that because you can see anything you want to see. But I think for women, it would be just who know who you are in Christ. Know what your strengths are. Be okay with the soft spots that you have. And they're probably always going to be soft spots, and you got to be okay with that. 
but focus more on the gifts that he gave you, not so much on the opportunities or the soft spots or whatever you want to call those things that you're not good at. Yeah. You're probably never going to be good at them. You may gradually get better at them, but you're never they're never going to be your strengths. Mm-hmm. And so you just need to say, fine, but spend You know, it's this whole 80-20 rule. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, where you spend 80% of your time focusing on your strengths. Only 20% of your time should be focused on your areas of opportunity. If you do that, what's getting the most of your time and your energy are the things that you're gifted at. And you're actually being able to push that forward and use that for whatever it is that God's got you placed in the area that you're placed in. But for women, sometimes it's really hard for us. We spend 80% of our time focusing on the things that we think we need to be better at, that we need to be improved on, and only 20% of the time on the things that we're good at. And so I would just say for women, flip it. Truly operate in this 80-20. Yes, you want to be better and you're going to always challenge yourself. But 80% of your day and in your mental capacity should be focused on the things that God has truly gifted you with. Mom, yes. I love that you're bringing comparison because I have never sat down and talked with a girl. And comparison was not a struggle either in that current moment or very recently. Because it's just so... I don't know why, but it's so easy it for us mm-hmm. to compare. And it's funny. It makes me think of um, this story. It's one of my favorite conversations because I feel so connected to Peter. Like I just feel really related to by Peter. So it's at the end of the book of John, like Jesus is about to go back to heaven and Peter is about to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And like, that's where we're at. And Jesus is talking to Peter on the at the Sea of Galilee, and he's telling him, like, feed my sheep, tend my lambs. He's telling him, like, I, he's basically redeeming him after he had denied him. And then he's telling him also how he's going to die. Like, so it's a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty heavy conversation. And behind Jesus, Peter notices John walking. And I mean, they're having a deep conversation and Peter goes, what about him? (laughs) And Jesus literally goes, what is that to you? He said, as for you, Peter, follow me. And I, I'm personally so convicted by that because especially with social media, you're Mm -hmm. so, we are so hyper aware of everything, especially the highlights, everything that's going on in other people's life and it's so easy even whenever we hear something directly from god that like this is something that i have for you this is the way that you're gonna come home to me and yet even then we can look past the lord and say but what about her yeah and i just truly believe that if god were to sit down with us he would say what jesus said is what is that to you yes as for you follow me and i'm gonna do with her what i have planned for her and whenever we truly believe that like as for me i'm gonna follow christ then we are able to like celebrate her for whatever because then it ended up being like oh john's never gonna die and rumor spread that like you and Jesus never even said that. <laughs> it's like it's crazy how easily we can be so consumed with yeah. other people, the strengths that they have, the journeys that they're on, and then we we kind of zone out of what God is telling us that He's given well, us. It's that, but then it's also I think as women, sometimes it's not that we even consume ourselves with the other person. What it does is it just causes us to focus on our opportunities and we just sit in self-pity 80 percent of the time versus you know saying you know what yeah i'm not good at that all right so what but i'm great at this so let's go rock this out yeah like that's the attitude you should be doing Mm -hmm. not self-pitying over the things that you're not good at because we're all not good at something Mm -hmm. i'm horrible at some things yeah (laughs) me too most of them athletics (laughs) <laughs> Not most, but definitely all the athletics. I'm horrible at those. <laughs> Me too. I mean, 
Josh and I have been in the thick of dreaming and praying over our ministry. And we've honestly been in a place of like, okay, like we see ourselves at a capacity where we're going to need to bring on a team. And Mm -hmm. so we've been really taking that to the Lord. And as we've been talking it through, we're like thinking of, okay, who has strengths that I don't? Mm -hmm. And who would be able to fit into this area that I don't fit in? And which I think is so funny because it's like, that's what makes the most dynamic yeah. team. But then whenever you look reflect on your own heart, it's like, I'm expecting myself to be the whole team by myself a lot of the times. And that's such an unrealistic weight. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm, I'm encouraged as a woman. I'm encouraged as a girl in this generation. And I'm thankful that you're one of my mentors who I can have conversations <laughs> with. <laughs> All bases covered. <laughs> I am. I feel like I'm in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, we love y'all so much. I hope that y'all are just crazy encouraged and that the Lord used this to meet you right where you are and strengthen you in your faith. That's always my prayer is that ultimately, regardless of what we talk about, our conversations point you to Him and draw you closer to Him, showing you how good it is to be near God. I love y'all so much, and we'll talk to y'all next week. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>